Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of the meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. It is 6 o'clock. If you would, please stand with me as Mr. Hubert uh, leads us in the invocation and Mrs. Powell leads us in the pledges. Before we get started, I uh, point a personal privilege. Uh, I have a regular uh, a librarian from Grangerland Intermediate, Debbie Burns. She attends as many board meetings as I do, I think. And uh, she lost her husband uh, on Saturday, so I'd ask that y'all remember her. Thank you. Please join me. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day that we have been blessed with. We're grateful for the for the rains and for the cooling weather as the temperature, as the seasons change. We're grateful for this building that we have and for all those who are dedicated to serve the the people of, of Connor ISD and also the, the students along with the teachers. We ask that we, that I will remember those overseas who are going through the, the awful tragedy that has happened over the weekend, that they may know that they are in our hearts and we pray for them as well. We ask you to be with us in this in this meeting as we conduct ourselves this day. We ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. Thank you very much. Uh, item number two, A, uh, Special District Recognition, National Merit Scholars. Dr. Stockton. All right, I'll invite uh, Dr. Curtis Nell, our Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education, to the podium to introduce our guests. Good evening, President Husbands, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board. I'm proud to be here this evening to recognize a fine group of young men and women and celebrate their significant academic accomplishments. Tonight we are celebrating seniors who have been recognized for their performance on the PSAT that was taken during October of their junior year. Before we introduce our honorees, I would like to thank those that have helped them reach this point. With us this evening representing our high school campuses are Tommy Johnson, Mark Morrill, Mark Weatherly, Mike Papadimitrio, Susan Caffrey, and Jill Malpass. By offering a vigorous and varied curriculum, our campuses do an outstanding job of preparing our students to be successful. Thank you to our great teachers and administrators for the job that you have done. While we're extremely proud of the efforts of our campuses, we understand that the journey of these fine students begins at home. Will the parents, grandparents, and guardians of these fine students please stand so that we can honor you at this time. We will now introduce two groups of students that have been identified by the College Board and the National Merit Scholarship Program. These awards are not mutually exclusive, so a student may be recognized in more than one group. The College Board's National Hispanic Recognition Program identifies academically, academically outstanding Hispanic and Latino high school students. Each year, the NHRP honors nearly 5,000 of the highest scoring students from the approximately 235,000 Hispanic and Latino juniors who take the PSAT. Our National Hispanic Scholars this year are Austin Alvarez. And I will tell you, many of these students aren't here because these are really busy kids. They're involved in a lot of different activities. So we're thankful for those that could make it tonight. And I'm gonna read every name because they deserve to have their name read even if they're not here, okay? Austin Alvarez, Dakota Arnold. <coughs> Dakota's here. I'll do my best to give you all a cue as to who's here. That way we'll know who to clap for. <laughs> Andres Ballesteros, Hugo Casillas, Jorge Chico, Elizabeth de Alba, Balbina de la Garza Ville, Sebastian Echegari. Echegari. Roxana Evans, David Flores, Isaac Harrelson, and here tonight we have Alberto Hinojos Rivera. <laughs> 
Also here tonight, Glenna Hervela. And also here with us is Kyle Leon. Juan Lucero, Davin Martinez, and here tonight, Luis Martinez. Claudio Melchore, Fernando Montez, Diego Morales, Priscilla Munoz, Santiago Sanchez, and with us tonight, Lydia Rodriguez. Also here tonight, Victoria Rosado. <laughs> Emily Roth. And here this evening, Roberto Saldivar. <laughs> Ashley Salinas. And with us this evening, Gabriela Sauceda. Alejandra Solis Zavala, Taylor Stout, here tonight, Jackson Valencia, and our final honoree tonight who is with us is Jasmine Workman. Take plenty of time, everyone. Yeah, you'll <laughs> Everybody just stand there and smile. <laughs> <laughs> As we continue to take pictures, I just want to say on behalf of the board of trustees, we're extremely proud of all of you, and we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. How about another big round of applause? <laughs> All right, and now for our second group of students to be recognized. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarships that began in 1955. Of the approximately 1.5 million entrants into the competition each year, about 16,000 students are notified that they have qualified as a National Merit Semifinalist. These National Merit Semifinalists represent the top 1% of scores in their respective states. It should be noted that the state of Texas has the eighth highest qualifying score in the nation making the accomplishments of these young men and women even more impressive. Our National Merit semifinalists are with us tonight, April Artrip. <laughs> Ms. 
William Beatty, Ryan Beledo, Christine Castagna, and with us is Walker Davidson. Also with us tonight, Travis Dill. <laughs> James Doherty, Samuel Dollar, Nicholas Esposito. With us tonight, Mackenzie Higdon. Annalise Hushka, Matthew Liu, Matthew McClellan, with us tonight, Shrey Mittal. Vinkadesh Mupanini, with us tonight, Sabrina Pickard. Margaret Steiner, Dylan Stobart, and here with us, Jackson Valencia. <laughs> Yikin Yang, Sarahi Yamaradra, Nicholas Zhao, and our final here tonight, Edward Shia. And our final, we have one addition. Great to get one more here. Sarari Yenamadra. All right, group photo, guys. Squeeze in. <laughs> Come around here, huh? Squeeze in. Come on, two, two right. rows. This side. <laughs> Again, just on ha behalf of the board, you guys are awesome. <laughs> and we appreciate you very much. And parents, we certainly appreciate you being here. If you wanted to step through the hallway to take pictures and make your way out, now would be an opportunity to do that. You're welcome to stay, but this is a good opportunity. Item 2C, uh, uh, Citizen Participation. Alfred, do we have anybody signed up tonight? Yes, sir. We Wait, did we miss one? I apologize. I apologize. My fault. 2B, Special District Recognition, Texas Association of Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance Exemplary Schools. Dr. Stock. Okay, at this time I'm real excited to invite Dr. Sharon Sturchy our coordinator for health and physical education to the podium. And as she comes up, I will remind everyone that she's a former administrator of the year in the state of Texas. So we're excited. Yeah.
Thank you. <coughs> President, husbands, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board, good evening. I'm here tonight to help celebrate and recognize two amazing CISD elementary schools. The Texas Association of Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance <coughs> recognizes outstanding health and physical education programs throughout the state of Texas. In 2014, 39 schools applied with a very rigorous application to the state for exemplary status. The application itself, 15 very, very rigorous criteria, ranging from the TEKS-based curriculum to assessment and evaluation to the smallest detail dealing with safety. Out of those 39 applications, the state awarded five exemplary awards. It is my pleasure to introduce Bridget Hodge, the physical education teacher at Sally K. Ride Elementary School, under the leadership of Megan Burnham. She was one of five in the state of Texas. not going to get out that easy. You got to come up here in front. <laughs> Thank you. No, hang on. Hang on. Hold on. <laughs> Do you have any family you'd like to recognize with you? No. No. <laughs> and it's it's pretty special just just FYI for all of you. This is Bridget's son's first birthday today, and so she's going to uh, hopefully get home for some uh, Woe Foods cake and ice cream. So we certainly are proud. Um, Bridget and Sally K. Ride was our very first exemplary school award in Conroe ISD. This is the third year for the award, so in year two, Conroe certainly was put on the map. This year, in 2015, there were 40 applicants applications sent to the state of Texas. They were scrutinized heavily. Same 15 criteria, very, very rigorous process. We were certainly happy to know that we were awarded a second year in a row. It is my pleasure to introduce Amber Reynolds and Sherry Rutledge, Hauser Elementary School, under the leadership of Angela Lozana. If you all come forward. And while the girls are there, Amber, would you like to introduce your family? This is Brian, Brian Reynolds, and of course, the Princess Harper. And Sherry, would you like to introduce your family? So we're there. Thank you so much for being here. We're really, really proud to put Conroy SD on the physical education map. Thank you. And as a board, we'd like to thank y'all. This is, this is so important that we continue to create well-rounded students that we focus on all their needs, not just our academic. And so thank you for pouring into our students, especially with their physical education. Thank you. And please feel free. Um, we're not trying to chase you off, but we do know school starts early in the morning, so feel free to dismiss. And, and uh, congratulations again. Thank you to all your families for supporting you. 
since we don't have anybody signed up for citizens participation, I'm going to uh, ask that we move item 9A and B up. So uh, item 9A, naming of Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education, Dr. Stockton. Okay, I'm very pleased to, today to tonight to recommend to you um, a person who comes to us from Clear Creek ISD. She's been there for the last 19 years or so and has 31 years in education, um, Debbie Phillips. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess we bought out a vote. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Mr. President, I move we approve. Thank, thank you for the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Now, how about congratulations? <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate your confidence in, in me and uh, my ability to take on this task. Um, it's no secret to any of you that Conroe ISD is known throughout the state, especially in the world of education, as the premier district in Texas. So it's a great honor for me to be a part of that. Um, but I think a, a, an unexpected blessing that's starting to uh, occur to me is that in spite of being such a large district, there's really a sense of small town family atmosphere, and I it's it, it's really special to experience. So thank you for that. I, I look forward to serving you and uh, achieving your mission and your vision for Conroe, and I especially look forward to being a part of your work family. Um, can I introduce my, please, my husband please Todd do. Phillips? This is my husband Todd. <laughs> we uh, have been married for 27 years and are looking forward to uh, being a part of Conroe ISD. So thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 And thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you lo loaning her out to us. <laughs> <laughs> Item 9B, naming of Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, Dr. Stock. Okay, I'm very pleased to recommend um, uh, Jim Caker to you for your consideration. Uh, Mr. Caker is currently the principal of York Junior High School. Prior to that, he was in the Fairfax County Public Schools where he served as Assistant Superintendent. Uh, Fairfax County Public Schools is one of the largest school districts in the country. Um, and prior to that, at some point, he was in Aldine ISD, as I'm reminded, as I see the Galindos sitting in the back. Um, <laughs> he goes way back with, with those Aldine folks, Dr. Hines, Dr. Gibson, and the Galindos. So uh, without further ado, let me recommend Jim Caker for your consideration. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Do I hear a motion? <clears throat> Mr. President, I move approval. Thank you. And a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Congratulations. Well, President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it is truly an honor to be here before you tonight and to have been selected to be the Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education. Um, I am pleased that. Ron and Kay Galindo are here with us tonight. I have to tell you that my wife is in Fairbanks, Alaska right now, or she would be here with me too. Um, but it really is a privilege. Uh, in the short time that I've been part of Conroe ISD, uh, I have learned that this is truly uh, one of the best districts in the nation. Uh, as Dr. Stockton pointed out, I came from a large district in Virginia. They thought they were the best, but they don't hold a candle to you guys. Um, it really has been a great uh, experience for me at York Junior High, and it's given me a chance to get to know uh, my colleagues in the principalship. And I so look forward to working with all of them in my new job uh, and working with Dr. Hines and, and Dr. Nall uh, and their tutelage in uh, helping me learn the, the landscape of uh, 
Assistant Superintendent in Conroe ISD. So thank you very much for your uh, support for me, and I promise to do an absolutely outstanding job for all of you, the families of Conroe ISD, the students, and uh, the leadership team of our school system. Thank you very much. Item three is the consent agenda. I've had no request to remove any items. Does anybody have any questions or items to remove? If not, uh, I would uh, let's, uh, entertain a motion. I move we approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Second. I'll second the motion. Thank you. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Item 4A, Targeted Improvement Plan for Austin Elementary and Public Hearing. Dr. Stockton, I turn it over to you, but first I will adjourn the board meeting at 625. Okay, we are adjourned for public hearing. So at this time I'm going to ask Shelly Winkler, who's our Director of Elementary Education, to come to the podium. She's going to provide information um, for the public hearing. At the conclusion of her presentation, anyone who would like to come to the podium and make comments is welcome to do so. We'll ask that you keep your comments to about two minutes. And then at the end of that, um, we will go back into our board meeting and ask for approval of the plan. Good evening. It is my privilege uh, to present an overview of the targeted improvement plan for Austin Elementary. Before we begin, I would like to introduce the principal and campus leadership team at Austin Elementary, Dr. Serena Pearson, principal, assistant principal, Katie Moe, Assistant Principal Michelle Allen, and Instructional Coaches Angela Martinez, Courtney Thibodeau, and Perla Cisneros. This team and the entire staff at Austin Elementary have been working diligently and we appreciate their commitment and hard work. Austin Elementary received an improvement required rating for 2014 and 2015 of improvement required and have been working to ensure a met standard rating for this upcoming year. Dr. Pearson and her campus leadership team have worked to develop a comprehensive targeted improvement plan to address all areas of needs. For the 2015 school year, a campus could have met standard by meeting the target in index one or index two. Although math was not a part of the accountability rating this year, the campus did make progress from 2014 to 2015. Austin Elema Elementary made a 12% increase in the overall math performance for third and fourth grade combined. In index two, the campus analyzed students who did not meet the progress measure. Out of those students, 44 students missed it by five or less questions, and of those 14 students only missed by one question of making the progress measure. Additionally, the campus saw a six-point increase in index four. Despite these areas of growth, the campus was short of meeting the MET standard targets. The targeted improvement plan has interventions that are focused on staff development, particularly in the areas of guided reading, writer's workshop, and tier one best practices. The campus has a firm belief that writing every day, pre-K through four, will strengthen the instructional programs, and, and we absolutely agree. Professional development and support in guided reading, writer's workshop, and using this data effectively has already made a positive impact. Um, evidence through walkthroughs, campus common assessments, and most recently a district writing benchmark in which the campus scored 21 points higher than this time last year. Austin Elementary has also continued their efforts with increased attendance through parent awareness and the support of our community outreach. This year the campus has seen an increase in attendance and at this time is at 96.5%. To strengthen the instructional practices or uh, instructional practices, there's additional learning time before, during, and after school available to students. And in the second semester, there will be an opportunity for Saturday interventions as well. Again, we continue those staff developments and school-wide programs, including Imagine Learning English for ELL learners, iLearn, Foundations Positive Behavior Support, and Financial Literacy programs. The campus has also provided staffing resources such as campus coaches and district coaches and coordinators and has an additional camp, uh, counselor added this year. 
District coordinators and coaches are regularly consulting with the campus to assess current needs to provide appropriate support. We are confident that the campus, in conjunction with our district support staff, will continue to work hard this year and show significant improvement to meet the standard on the 2016 STAR assessment. The campus and the district will continue to monitor and adjust this plan as, and levels of support as needed. In spring of 2016, the Texas Education Agency will provide further guidance on submitting a turnaround plan. Once this template is developed and released in January, the campus will use current data um, to, and, and current information to capture sy systemic change, current and future initiatives being implemented on the campus and how these fit into current structures. These plans will be submitted to TEA in late spring for approval. In the meantime, we are confident that Austin Elementary will continue to work hard to make each child successful. Okay, at this time, um, if anyone wants to make a comment, I'll ask you to come to the podium and state your name and make your comments. I see no movement whatsoever, so I take that as a sign no one's coming up. So at this time, we conclude our public hearing. Very good. We're back in session at uh, 629, um, and I would entertain a motion to up Dr. Stock. I, I would just like to ask this, uh, um, add this before you make your motion. I want to commend the leadership of Austin Elementary School. Um, as you know, we have academic conferences on every campus. and. And theirs was, abs was absolutely uh, spectacular this year. And um, the, the framework's in place for future success, and we're very pleased with what's happening. I went over to the ladies before the board meeting and thanked them for coming and, and told them it's going to be okay. And they said, we're excited to be here, because they are, because they're doing great things. We're excited to have you. Yeah. And with that, I'd entertain a motion to accept the plan. I'll move to accept the plan. And a second? Second. Thank you very much. Any discussion? Questions? I have a couple questions, I think. Okay. Maybe just one. Uh, Ms. Winkler, I think I mentioned or I thought I saw one of the interventions was before school, after school, and Saturday interventions. Yes, sir. Is that with the teachers on the campus or is that with the additional coaches or both? Or could you give me a little more kind of clarity on that? In the morning and the afternoon, um, the teachers on the campus provide that support. If it's during contract hours, um, if they come in at 7.30, it is a part of their duty schedule. Um, and some of our teachers um, do receive additional funds to do after school and Saturday tutorials. Okay. And that and that's a voluntary thing? The, the yes. After and, and mm -hmm. Saturday? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That answers You're my welcome. question. Right. Any other questions or discussion? Yes. How many counselors do you have on campus? Two. And you added another one? Uh, the second one was an addition this year. And what was, the, what was our reasoning for adding the counselor? We met with the campus to um, determine their needs for this upcoming school year um, and looking at the positive behavior support that they had in place, as well as um, helping families with issues, the campus leadership um, deemed a counselor appropriate. What's our appointment for counselor? I'm sorry? What's the formula we typically use across the board? Formula? One. Oh, one. one. Elementary, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, not sure, maybe 850. Uh, we, can, we can get that to you. Okay. <clears throat> and, I, and the reason I ask is because of, I, I think I raised this concern a couple of years back relating to uh, Sam Houston and the number of counselors that I deemed was um, somewhat of the necessary for the add the additional counselor and it was uh, some sort of formula that we were going by but based on the economically uh, disadvantaged areas that these schools are uh, are the demographic I deem that oftentimes that the additional counselor is needed and uh, I just hate for us to uh, delay in acting on those type of things and you know because with, with Sam Houston uh, how many counselors do we have at Sam Houston? Yeah. Just one? We have just one. Just one. So again, I think that's something that we need to uh, address, I'll put a little bit more attention to the amount of councils we have at those those schools versus our, our other schools. Yes. Okay. That's all. No other Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay. All those in favor of accepting the plan, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. <clears throat> 
Item 5, administra uh, 5A Administration 2016-17 School Calendar Information, Dr. Stockton. It's that time of year. I'm going to ask Dr. Hines to come up and present some preliminary information to you. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Stockton. Uh, as was mentioned, this is that time of the year where we begin to discuss and look at next year's calendar. Um, the district level planning and decision making committee of Conroe Independent School District is the committee that's responsible for developing a calendar to, to bring back to you for recommendation. And generally the process uh, is that we'll begin that discussion actually tomorrow afternoon in our district level planning committee and we'll hopefully develop some drafts. Um, once we do that, we'll, we'll We'll either have one draft or multiple drafts. We'll put those up on the uh, website and take comments. Generally, we do that. We do that through the month of December and then uh, through early January, and then we take those down. We look at the comments, and then hopefully we meet in January, look at uh, what we want to recommend, and then we'll come back hopefully in February with a recommendation for you. Uh, there's a few things that we want to just point out and up on the. The screen right now is a, just a blank draft of what we start with. Um, one thing that is not something that we can change is, the, and the number one comment we get back on the in the on the web is, "Why don't you start earlier?" and uh, and we can't. So uh, for next year, that first day of instruction would be August the 22nd. So we cannot begin school before that day that's early. or later, right? And that's actually uh, that's actually. Uh, the way the cycle works, it's the earliest of the days we can have it. So, um, so that's good for this year. Uh, it, the calendar will also include two early release days that will be used for teacher conferences or for planning that you approved as a waiver last year. Uh, in addition, we have uh, two days for professional development that we have a waiver that you approved last year. Uh, so that turns our calendar from a typical 180 days to 178 days, and our teachers work a 187-day contract. Um, we, we also work around the uh, assessment calendar when we develop this so we don't plan the holiday right well during a, an assessment or the day before. <laughs> uh, probably the biggest change going into this year was House Bill 2610 which was the bill that changed the requirement from 180 days of instruction to 75,600 minutes of instruction, which basically equates to 420 minutes per day, and uh, which is the typical length of most of our school's day, although there's some variation. Um, and so the, I believe the intent in changing that was to give some flexibility to school districts to make up inclement weather days because one of the things that we have to have is we have to account for plan for at least two makeup days for inclement weather uh, and so all of that is um, more or less in the discussion as we look at the calendar for next year and so really tonight I wanted to bring this forward as information and then to make sure if you had anything that you wanted us to talk about or look at as we began this discussion to, I'll bring that back to the district level committee after you, sir. Oh, Dr. Hines, I just had a quick question about the House bill, and I think I understand. So aren't they really trying to give us some flexibility where we could go a little longer during the day? Is that the idea? We Instead could. Instead of having to yeah. take the two extra days. Is that that's my understanding? But I just wanted to, yes. That's your understanding as well? Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's an option that we could put in yeah, place. So, so if an, we hour, had the, an hour longer for a week rather than having a makeup right. day in June or whatever. Right. Yes, or okay. five minutes right. a day every that was day. My I, like that. I like that. Anybody else have a question about that? I, I just have a, I'm curious. What, uh, we've looked at this, this is my second time to go through the calendar. And, and as we, we get to go out and talk to the kids and we kind of jokingly say we set the, set the calendar. And I'm sure everybody wants more days off, right? The kids do, which we're not going to give them. But uh, I'm just curious, is there a particular date that comes up often whenever you're planning this that they don't get off, that they're requesting to get off? Or, you know, there's sometimes the, 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 the 26th date on start, and that's a non negotiable. But are there some days in here that are heavily considered to change? 
It, there's, that makes sense. There's, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, we, we do study other calendars out there, and we talk to other districts, and there's so many variables that play into the calendar process that makes it really difficult to compare apples and oranges. One of the, one of the discussions that we have annually, and I think we've settled the last few years, is whether to end the semester with a balanced number of days, which would end it in the third week of January, or, or in the semester prior to the holidays. And we've, we used to do it in January, and after much consideration, the, the basic scale tip to let's just end it before the holidays. And so that's one that we've been down that road before. The other feedback we've received over the years is the winter break holiday. You know, depending on where that falls, yeah. some folks will, will, will want to get more days and go a half a week. And what we've heard over the years in our school district is people like two full weeks where they get the weekends mm -hmm. on each end so they get more consecutive days. So we've kind of penciled that in as something that we've heard loud and clear from our constituents over the years is they really like the consecutive days of getting those three weekends uh, in their leverage for time. Uh, you know, spring break is always one that's become a little bit it used to be pretty uniform and i think this year from what i've seen from the other districts it will be pretty uniform again and this year was uniform and next year i think will also be uniform and we get a lot of feedback from we typically have lined up with ut and a and m but the universities have quit lining up together and they oh. they do different things and some of that's promoted to get more people to the beach longer and there are other reasons why but um, the short of it is that's been a little bit trickier and uh, with lining up and, and Lone Star College, for example, which is within our district, also yeah. serves many school districts. And yeah. so they're left kind of figuring out who to line up with. But uh, so spring break is one that we do look at uh, for lining up. And I think we have already for next year an idea of what that week will be. Uh, the other one we get. Um, certainly we've learned, you know, if we have to do an inclement weather, we won't put it on Good Friday and we know not to do that. Uh, and you know, and, and so I think from the one that we hear the most, I think I've heard the most in terms of feedback over the years is we used to have an October holiday, and we lost it. And that and that that was probably the one we hear loud and clear is like there's nothing in October. And uh, some districts can still a lot of districts don't take a day in October really when you go out and study. Uh, a few do use it as staff development day um, because many districts. Instead of two days of staff development waiver, they'll have a three-day waiver. And so they have an extra day to put in, and they'll, the lot of them will use that October date. And we just only have two. And so the October date, the trade-off was a full day of Thanksgiving, or full week of Thanksgiving. Full week. Yeah. We talked about if, if we were to go a full day, full week of Thanksgiving, we need to make that day up. And that's when Columbus Day <laughs> A lot of people like the full week at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Heard that. I think that feedback's come pretty hard. Pretty, Dr. You know. Hines, e even though the the uh, calendar is loaded with days in the second semester because you know because we can't start for a certain date, uh, isn't it offset by the is it the um, the AP exams? We lose about uh, two. The high schools get impacted with AP exams for about two weeks, and then the. And then there's a, it's there's heavy spring testing for assessment as well. So um, there is an imbalance. It makes it a little bit difficult, particularly the first nine weeks isn't nine weeks. It's really eight. And um, but once we kind of get through it and get into cycle, everybody works out. And I think when when the feedback we've had is all things considered, you know, people are okay and they understand that even though there's fewer instructional days, you just got to make them count. And, and you're right, in the spring we do lose some days to testing, we lose days to um, the AP test as well. And we also have a lot more UIL events in the spring, so there's a lot more out of class time at the secondary levels. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Items are just for information, so we'll uh, be bringing it back to us in February, right? Thank you. Uh, Item 5B, Dr. Stockton, select uh, PBR, PBK Architects and Texas IDI Group for pre-construction and design services. Okay, Easy Foster, I'll ask you to come to the podium and make that recommendation. President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure tonight to bring forward for you a recommendation for your approval. The selection of PBK Architects and the IBI Group for pre-construction and design services and then also to delegate the authority to Dr. Stockton, our superintendent, to negotiate and execute the owner-architect agreements for these projects individually. Uh, the projects 
are as follows. Assigned to PBK are a new junior high school, Conroe High School renovations, our safety and security upgrades, a robotics addition at College Park High School, our 2018 life cycle projects, a Stewart Elementary build out, and additions at Grangerland. IBIs seeking to assign to a new elementary school will we'll call Flex 18. A new intermediate we'll call Flex 19. Knox Junior High Additions, additions at the Woodlands Transportation Center, Austin Elementary Renovations, our 2017 life cycle projects, and our 2019 life cycle projects. PBK Architects and IBI Group are recommended for selection in accordance with Texas Government Code, Chapter 2254, to perform pre-construction and design services for these multiple projects because we, the district, believe them to be highly qualified based on their <coughs> demonstrated competency and their qualifications. Once selected, the district will, as projects are initiated, attempt to negotiate contracts with PBK and IBI for fair and reasonable prices. At this time, I request your approval of these selections. I hear a motion. I so move for approval. And a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? I just have one question, I think. Mr. Foster, for PBK uh, Grangerland Editions, was Cox also supposed to be a part of that or not? We had talked about it originally, and, it is and looking not. at the numbers, we're going to, that's not part of a recommendation. Okay, all right. This time okay. that was my question. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item 5C, Capital Improvements Update. Mr. Stock. All right. I, I do have to apologize. We have another month without pictures because we're still working on things that you can't physically see. Uh, we are working at the Woodlands High School on a girls locker room uh, addition renovation project. Uh, I am happy to report that our utility providers have completed their relocation of their utilities. So they are clear of our work area. We are now working on our utilities on our side of the meters to clear them of the work area so we can start foundation work and get the construction underway uh, post haste. So next month we should be able to show you some pictures of uh, foundation progress. And But right now the, the ticker is moving up very slightly. We are 5% complete. Just a comment, I uh, had a, a mother of a student at the Oak Ridge ninth grade campus approach me a couple days ago. She was extremely happy with the widening of the road and all of the additional classroom space at the ninth grade campus, so thank you. You're welcome. That was good feedback. Well, I, I'm glad to hear it. I'm just yes. you know, she was doing extremely my job. pleased. Good. Very good. Okay. Uh, item 5D, uh, design development presentation for the new elementary school in Oak Ridge feeder zone. Dr. Stock. Uh, Mr. Foster, please. Again, at this time, it, it is my pleasure to bring for you to, uh, a design development progress uh, item for your review to, today. At this time, if I can, I'd like to thank some of our administrators who have been involved in the process because we've had a, a, a lot of time with Dr. Gibson. Uh, Ms. Winkler spent a, a large number of hours in our office with our design team working out the ins and outs of our, our uh, prototype elementary school, which you're going to see the, the evolution of, of that design uh, tonight. Uh, we've also spent a lot of time with Dr. Null and Dr. Hines. Uh, they've worked in and out uh, offering suggestions and, and uh, other improvements as we've discussed our way through this. We're trying to make the right decisions for the right reasons at this point. So at this time, I'd like to bring up and introduce to you the principal working with us with the IBI group. Uh, his name is Danny Rooster, and he'll take you through this design. Good evening, uh, Dr. Stockton, President Husbands, and the board. Uh, before we get started, I, I would like to introduce a couple of our team members that made the trip with us tonight. I have TJ Gonzalez, is a project architect in our office at IBI, and Adam Jones is with DBR, one of your longtime MEP engineers, and is a consultant on this project for us, and we, we're glad to have him. So what we're going to go through is a, a shortened version of the booklets that are in front of you. And so I'm not going to dwell on the minutia, the details, and the specifications, but we'll try to hit some of the fun stuff and get to any questions that you have. But I do want to say it is an honor, and we really appreciate the opportunity you've given us to work in your district. We've, we've really enjoyed working here. Uh, th that is the typical thank you sheet. Please, please understand we do believe it is an honor to work for this district. So the design development phase 
jumped into the fact that this is an evolution, of the next generation of a facility that you've, you're very happy with in your school district. It's, it's based on the FLEX program that you've got. We're, this will be number 17 of that plan. The only changes are where we came about were requested by the folks on the, from the district, just things that change over the course of time by the way you live in a building and by the way you use a building. The other departure from the previous flex school that you're going to see here tonight is the fact that it's harder and harder to find a, a good piece of land for a school. And you combine that with the fact that we are required now to put so many of the cars and the buses for, in the pickup lines on our sites. And so we're really, really squeezing down the green space in the sites. So this will be a two-story uh, flex space, flexible flex school number 17. And we'll get into that right here. So the site plan is in the far southeast part of the district. It is uh, accessible, will be accessible once the roads are done to Riley Fuzzle and the Grand Parkway via Burnham Woods Drive and Imperial Promenade. The uh, closest schools are Burnham Woods Elementary, which is uh, very close to it, just about a mile away. And then Snyder and Broadway are also very close to this facility. And this is your site. As you can see, you recognize your footprint. It, it is the flex school idea, but it's, it's a smaller footprint because of the two-story. And so you see how much uh, parking space that we have to, or actually it's stacking space, we need to require on the site to keep the folks off of the road. And that's, it really reduces the amount of green space on the site. And we don't want to give that up because outdoor education is very important to these children. But to let you know where we're at, the, we're going to front a street called Lake Falls Lake Drive. And that drive will connect from Burnham Woods on the west to Imperial Promenade on the east. Imperial Promenade will eventually make its way to Grand Parkway. The road, the north-south road on the side of the school where the buses and the staff arrive, that's Guadalupe River Road. That comes out of the, that will be an extended road from the Creekside uh, subdivision just south of this site. Working very hard with transportation to get all the buses on site so we don't have to have any lining up in the street and uh, I'll be surprised if we don't have most every parent able to park on campus waiting to pick up the children. And so here we are with the the next generation of the flex floor plan as you can see it is the school that this district is used to. This is the prototypical school that has been so successful in this district and the idea wasn't to make changes just for changes sake. The only changes you're going to find in this plan are those that came from the district based on the way the schools are now being used that has evolved over time. And this shows that the only portion of the building that's the second floor is a academic wing. So general, the general idea when this happens is the older kids will go upstairs, fourth and third grade, if this is a K through four school. But it's a, the second floor design was based on safety. There's, you can't overlook an atrium. There's, there's no two-story spaces that a, ch a child has access to. It's all corridors and classrooms, just like if you were downstairs. This is the physical education and fine arts wing. It, again, it is it is your flex school, just as it's always been. It can change to an intermediate school with minor changes. The only, the only change you're going to see here is we swapped out a book room for an occupational therapy room near the gym. We may. The, the idea being that the OTPT space might make more sense near the life skills, which is where it's located in this plan. The, uh, if you've been in, in Patterson and some of the newer flex schools, you'll see that the library is now on the cafetorium in the commons area. We're doing the same thing here. Minor changes to food service based on the, the food, the child nutrition department and the things that they'd like to change from how they're using their kitchens. And so we're able to update that. Academic wing is very much like what the, the staff are used to in your current schools. Uh, the typical classroom has changed a little bit based on how they're using those, but it's really technology and just a method of teaching type. But all the classrooms will be uh, identical. And so you go upstairs and it's, it's the same thing. You really are living in the same building whether you're upstairs or down. 
Now, additionally, upstairs, we've added a couple of staff restrooms, so you don't have to go down stair for, stairs for that. And we added a, uh, a cart, a WOW cart charging station, so that we never have to move the uh, computer charging carts up and down the stairs. Uh, the, the other changes that came about were in the administration area and the main entrance of the school. Uh, we were catching up the flex plan to the latest security issues in the, in the secure vestibule. Additionally, they asked, this is a really good idea, they asked to get a toilet into the front of the school so that when you have a large group of people, say, at registration and somebody needs to use a restroom, they don't have to get access to the school. They're still in the secure part of our school to take care of that. Also, the minor changes with the way the principal and the conference room is laid out. Uh, changed the way the, the file room is used because they were they're running a little tight on the, the file space. And minor changes to the clinic. Additionally, we moved a large group instruction space out of the administration pod and across the hall just for more flexibility. And you see there the stairs are wide open to the front of the school. All the children arrive through this secure vestibule just like what you have been adding to your newest schools and uh, to the upper right right there that would be the kindergarten pre-k wing if there's pre-k so that they can have their own bus door to get in and out of that facility i'm going pretty fast this is a conceptual idea we're still working with the design committee but uh, we, we think we're getting closer now uh, the district does very well with classic academic lines and, and design ideas. Uh, we don't think this is a huge departure. We think this fits in with the uh, flex school idea that you're dealing with now. Yes, sir. Is there an elevator in this school? Yes, there is. Can you, I, I'm sorry. I'm I, can, I can show I'm, you. It I'm is. Looked and looked. I, I just, I just, um, I it's right there. D2. Right there, upper left-hand corner. Thank you. And which, actually, <coughs> it's right there. It's just under the menu, but we try to keep it near the front entrance. It's the, kind of so that everybody has access to it. That's a requirement. It's uh, not just an elevator. It's an ADA accessible elevator, so it's pretty large. And so the idea behind how we arrived at our facade and the design of the school is to take it the next generation from where you've been but to also they, they showed us some beautiful images of the high school you're getting so they wanted to respond to that a little bit not copy it but respond to what we're going to have on the new high school this is your secure vestibule into the building very durable colors the design specifications from your planning department are very durable and and a really solid building if you're, you've been in Patterson, then you've been in this space. This is the Commons Auditorium and with the library facing the Commons. Our schedule, we'll have the construction documents ready in January. They'll go to bed, they'll get construction started in the spring and have the kids there in the fall of 2017. And with your permission, Yes. I've got a question for you. Just go back to the beginning. The uh, the Fall Lake Drive. Yes, sir. Did you say that you're going to use that road as the stacking lane? No, that's the stacking lane is on that's the, the campus, entrance to this camp. That's the but entrance. that's how you get into it. Yes, sir. Okay. So I thought I heard you say that we would build that road. No, sir. No, it's it's not built yet. It's, it's, it's how, not built yet. No, okay. sir. When once it's built, it, it, build the it. developer's building. Now. Okay, thank you. Let me clear that up. We have a video. Uh, I'll talk across this. There's no sound, and it, it's just a little jerky. It's hot off the presses, but we wanted to get. I know sometimes a, a static image. It's it's hard to get a feel for spaces and the size of a building, but this is. This is your building. As you can see, the massing is different because it's a two-story building. But we think we've left the idea of a flex school and how you enter a flex school and how the flex school is used is still matching your prototype. I think the we tried to get the scale right for the size of the end users for the kids. We didn't want to overwhelm them. And this is an image of when you step in through the front of the building. 
Uh, doors will be closed because that's a secure vestibule. Um, <laughs> uh, and so you step in and then we catch you in the secure vestibule, but it's a bright, airy, lots of natural light. That's the uh, reception room just to your right. You continue into the school and again, conceptual, we'll work with your design committee. If there's any color changes that they'd like to see, we'll show them that before we commit anything to construction documents. But uh, there's your commons, and then we'll work our way around the corner back to the, the front door. And we'll end up, you see, there's the front door, and to your right would be <coughs> the stairs on the way up and the elevator on the right. That's the new elementary school for the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. Any questions? I noticed you chose the principal there. Could you, could you tell me his name? <laughs> No, I can't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that for information? Yes. Uh, item six. Uh, a financial reports, Dr. Stock. Mr. Rice, if you'll come present the financial reports, please. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I'm here this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of October. Uh, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. And the first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet. The balance sheet includes our assets, liabilities, and fund balances for the district. Always like to look at our cash and investments. We'll concentrate here on our general fund. We can see we have $13,300 cash on hand. We have bank deposits of $142,000. Invested in the pools, $53.4 million. In our Capital One Now account, $42.5 million. Investments at less than one year, $26.2 million. And long-term investments, greater than a year, $31.8 million, for a total cash and investments of $154.3 million. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement, oh, let me go back one, uh, includes our revenues and expenditures and fund balances in the revenue column that's made up of local sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. If we look at our local sources, you can see uh, property taxes uh, are starting to come in. The majority of that is outstanding property taxes. The tax bills have just recently gone out. We'll start receiving those uh, later on this month through, uh, through February. Uh, good news on our self-funded uh, insurance plan. Uh, for the second month in a row, we've had positive results. Uh, total for the year, we've had total revenues of $6,621,000. Uh, our expenses, $6,458,000 for revenue over expenses of $163,246. Last year at this time, we're about $800,000 to the negative, so, so good results there. Uh, participation at our wellness centers. Uh, for the month of October, we had 547 visits at Oak Ridge Center and at the Conroe Center, 168 for a total of 715. Our, invest, our investments uh, as of October, we ended September at two hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars invested. Million dollars. You know what? I practice that all day long, and I said thousand every time. <laughs> every time I said thousand. Uh, two hundred thirty-nine million dollars. Yeah, that's just a zero. You <laughs> commas. Yeah, we we ended uh, the month of October at uh, two hundred seventeen million dollars invested. So the WAM of our pools and our Capital One Now account is, is one day. We're yielding a little over 20 basis points. The WAM of our investments that are less than one year is 238 days, and we're yielding 41 basis points. And our longer term investments is 759 days, yielding over 100 basis points, or 1%. The WAM of our combined portfolio is 153 days, yielding 37 basis points. Our benchmark is the 90-day T-bill, and it is at eight basis points. And that is all. Any questions? That's excellent. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. 
closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting is authorized by section 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either A, this public meeting upon reconvening of the public meeting, or B, at the subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. Closed session of the board will now be held. It is 7.04. The board is now in open session. It is uh, 8.04. Uh, item 10A, Dr. Stockton. Oh, Ms. Gladys, I'll have you do that. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. As you know, at your meeting last month, you recommended a okay. uh, determination uh, to allow Dr. Stockton to uh, give notice to Kirsten Raglan that we were proposing for termination of her term employment contract for good cause. District sent notice is required by statute. Ms. Raglan did not request a hearing from the commissioner. And so tonight we are asking for you to um, terminate her employment contract effective immediately. I move that effective immediately we terminate the term employment contract of Kirsten Raglan for good cause. We have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item 10B, Dr. Stockton. Turn it over to Ms. Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. You know, this is the moment we've been waiting for all year to attach your vote to the Montgomery County Appraisal District Board of Directors. Um, you have 1,762 votes to cast. Um, I think the votes are unchanged from the last time I shared them with you, but I'm going to tell them to you again in case Please. they're not. Um, currently, Mike Metter has 705 votes. Bruce Tuff has 219 votes. Ed Chance has 12. Tom Cox has 11. And Charlie Riley has 523 votes. Um, Dr. Stuck and I were trying to do the math uh, earlier, but uh, we didn't have time to finish. You didn't give me a chance. I know, I didn't give him a chance to finish. Um, I think we're fairly confident that Mike Metter is probably already um, will be on the board regardless of how you cast your votes and probably Charlie Riley as well. Not that that should play a decision how you cast your votes, but for whatever that is worth. So you can vote for one or five. Well, uh, would you, as a general rule, agree that if we gave two people 706, we'd virtually be locking them in? And the balance to somebody else, and then um, th before we even talk names, would that right. be a true I mean, statement? Yes. I don't think anybody has enough votes left to swing it, do they? No. Unless they no. Because I think Bruce is going to get a lot more of the Small. mud votes. Uh, I think in, in place of Biff Lacombe. Yes. But uh, he was their nominee, was he not this time? I believe. Bruce he, was. Yeah. He was, and he got the college votes. Is all he's gotten so far, yes. pretty much, right? Yeah, and the mud votes are. Oh, uh, maybe seven, uh, 25. But not enough to take any position away from two no. that we gave 706 to, right? No. Okay. So, um, let, let me just open uh, this up for discussion. Uh, I mean, we have a motion. We can make a motion if, if anybody wishes. Who was your, who was, who was who your nominee? nominating? Melanie? Uh, it was Paul Vercher, but as talking to him after the fact, he didn't submit a bio when I requested it, and I, I think he's right. he's out, out well, in well, my mind. I, I, would propose, <laughs> I would propose that we vote uh, 706 for Tom Cox, 706 for, um, help me, Ed Chance, and then uh, the balance for Bruce. It would be 350. About 356 or something no, like that? No, that'd be 350. Okay. Is the balance. Okay. Um, does anybody have a preference over, I mean, or, or disagree? You know, what? The, the candidates are uh, Bruce Tuff, Ed Chance, Mike Metter, Charlie Wrighty, Alfred Anderson, Tom Cox, Paul Bercher, and Johnny Williams. But Johnny Williams and Alfred whatever and Paul Ver Anderson and Paul Vercher none of them submitted bios and so in my mind because I question Carrie on that in my mind the three of them should not be considered as serious candidates okay so a uh, motion second I said you, you I, I have a motion on the floor for 706 for Tom Cox 706 for Ed, Ed Chance and 350 for tough for, for tough and we have a motion in a second any further discussion Nah. Huh? <laughs> sure. Uh, 
I, Skeeter, I, I just made a motion, Skeeter. I no no axe to grind. Whatever. I don't necessarily have an axe to grind, but uh, I'd rather. It's just me, but I'd, I'd rather switch the 350 and the 706. 350 for Ed Chance, 706 to Bruce Tuff. Okay. My my request. Uh, well, so there's a motion. A there's a motion. Amendment. I'd like so I'd like a to second amendment. I'll amend the motion. Amendment. You guys are making this hard because I had to take these notes. Yeah, I know. So okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, I session. Okay. Well, well, can I ask, a lot of experience can I ask with, for uh, clarification? Like, you the comment time. about 706 earlier was a candidate with 706 is assured to be on the board. Well, Bruce right. already has some. Um, so, so he already has some. That was my question. Do you want to subtract that from the 706, or so he ends up with a total of 706? There were 700 mud votes. Well, that's what I think reading this. I mean, I mean, right? Bruce is going to get the Woodlands the muds. Are what there are 13 of them. Yeah. So they have they have votes. That's about 700. That's 725 votes. votes, I think, is what it is. Okay. So I mean, Bruce is going to get his. If he gets half of those votes, he's <coughs> okay. The the votes that are outstanding will probably go to Charlie Riley, Montgomery, and and uh, Magnolia. Uh, but uh, anyway. I just, I personally, I don't want to support Ed Chance that heavily. This okay. is my thing. Well, there's a motion and an amendment, and so we will vote. Uh, any further discussion? First, right? We'll vote on the amendment first. We have an amendment and a second. You have to have second. Do we? Yeah. Well, you second, second, second the first motion. Oh, you second seconded the, the amendment. Yeah, I just second all the way around. Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, we're voting on the amended motion of, or whether to amend the motion from the balance of votes to Ed Chance, uh, I mean, uh, 706 to Ed Chance instead of uh, the balance to Bruce to the balance to Ed Chance and 706 to Bruce. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I say that correct? Yep. Carrie? That's, I, that's okay. Down. Uh, <laughs> if you're in favor of giving Bruce more votes than Ed Chance, in other words, please raise your right hand. Three. Okay. Four. Okay. That's four. If you're uh, opposed to that, raise your right hand. That's two. Four to two. Five. We have well, just, I, just raised your hand, didn't you? I, I, didn't. I voted the, for the amendment. I voted. Okay. okay. Yes. So, so it's five, five to two. I'm sorry. I just couldn't see your hand. So that, that passes. And uh, so the motion is amended. So now we vote. To pass the motion, or is that yes. pass it? Yes. 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 All those in favor of that motion, raise your right hand. All the people like it. Passes unanimously. We're seven zero now. Okay, seven zero. On the. We'll see if Mary or if Linda can make sense of this. Exciting. Okay, and and now we come to item ten uh, C. Thank y'all for your help with that. Uh, item ten C, uh, annual appraisal of superintendent and superintendent contract. You have a motion. Mr. Hubert. Yes, sir. Having completed the superintendent's annual evalu evaluation, I move that the board approve the superintendent's contract and continue the appointment of Dr. Stockton as presented in executive session. I got a second the motion. You have two seconds. <laughs> Any discussion, comments, questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And entertain a motion for no, we'll right. Right. Can I ask a question, please? <laughs> as, <laughs> as, like, as presented by me or as presented <laughs> by somebody else? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. They just wanted to leave you guessing. Second. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. We are adjourned.